I now seek this flag on behalf of the Wututi and the Kukuyao, traditional owner of this land. Sticking this flag as a symbol to the government to be, for us to be recognized that we are the rightful owner of this land. We are owners of it and we entitled it and so we fight it for it and we, we want it because we need it and we all councils, we get together and we can use that land for us. We have traveled a long way but the struggle has just begun. The survival of our land, our people. We are now at the start of new journey for our survival. You see, my friends, we've been oppressed so long under the thumb of the Queensland government, many of us. The bitterness of loss and the despair at having no place in your country. The idea that black man is the lowest of the low. It's seeing our people to an early grave. The struggle has been taking place in our hearts. And it, and it has been destroying us. We're here in the Lockhart River Mission. We're not only for the space base here, land rights, but a whole over in the Cape York Peninsula, right along here and up here, right across there, way up to Cape York, up at Bamaga. And my friend, whoever you might be big shot here, someone, from the parliament, wherever you are, I say to you, this has belonged to us with our Virginia and Torres Strait Islanders. We are the rich and We gotta sit down on that area and base that there, you know, sit down. That mining comes, or maybe space thing comes, gotta sit down in that area. And all of us should pull together, one rope, one rope not slack. We've got to fight together if this going to be. We've got to win somewhere. If we can't win, we might be able to compromise, but we've got to win. That's all. I'm a resident of Kalanyama, Colonel Lawrence, my name. I just come to this meeting, and uh, which I really appreciate, to come here for this meeting, and uh, happy to see all my people here. You know, we've been talking about the same, same thing like the National Park, you know, down the Kanyama, we are the environment, Minister for the Environment and Wildlife Service, you know, come up there. I don't know whether he went to your community, but he did come up to Kanyama. The minister himself for the environment and wildlife service, you know, the National Park. We want the land left alone because there's our sacred site and the story plays in the borough ground and our the spirit belongs to our ancestors still exist there around there and we want the land to be saved and be protected. There are lots and lots of things that you and I have to do for ourselves. The old saying is saying, future is what you make out of it. Every one of us have to be very firm in mm. our conversation, encourage others that are weak, and tell them that land right Traditional land means quite a lot to us. This is all, this map are all leasehold. I was born right here, Violet Vale Station, and all this my traditional land from my father's side, and furthermore from my mother's side. We talk about here today, this afternoon, in the 
what today, 23rd of October 1919. All right, we're going to talk about it again 1991, and we're going to talk about it again 1992. We're going to talk about it again 1993. We here for land right my, look, my dear sister and brother between Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders, we got to be harmony. We got to fight for the government until the state government can recognize us. We are lifting our voice, any minority. We are not a multi, multi million people. We are only minority between Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders. This is our only little, little reserve. So we're going to fight each, we're going to fight for the government to recognize us between Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. Here in Juno, Bamaga, where, wherever, where you're magical, and Lockhart, and Opel, and uh, uh, Cabotwood, and all around there, even Town Yam, even Alice River there. The Minister for Aboriginal Affairs, Robert Tickner, told the Queensland government about our problem. Will Wayne Goss listen to our problem in Cape York? We've got racial discrimination in Cape York. We've got second-class people in Cape York. We've got people who got no independence in Cape York. We say to the white people of this country, you want to free South Africa? What about South Africa in Cape York? We're here talking about land right and that we're going to form a land council. We've been fighting all along for that right, not wrong. We, everybody knows that right. We're asking government not for wrong thing. We are asking government for the right. Northern Territory Aboriginal got their right. But we in Queensland, we haven't got that right. The land, the land the people are talking about now, they want to take it. <coughs> Give it to them and don't offer something back to them, just like you said, the pie being offered to us. If we don't want to take the pie, we don't want to take it. But, but these people talking about to get their land back. You understand that? So the average people a long time ago never offered any, any European people any land, but they took it. Whenever you go back south, you tell Goss government that we Aboriginal people want our land back. Tell them that, will you? Thank you. But now we've got the opportunity, but what we want is a free hold title, eligible free hold title. The one you can say it's your own, your own ground. So, that's what my opinion is now. And I'm not only talking for Kawanyama and my people in Kawanyama, but I'm talking for whole Cape York Peninsula and the Aboriginal people in Cape York here and in Queensland. Thank you very much. My name is Tommy George. Thank you, Chairman. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, I just came down here this morning and uh, I want to like to have a talk about it. And I wonder, well, you can see it on my shirt. I, I come down here to find out Quinkin country. I want my land, Quinkin country. I wouldn't come down here for nothing, ladies and gentlemen. I want my country, Quinkin country. We wish to have land rights as quickly as we can and as someone said to me people have been waiting for 200 years for this 
In the early 90s, the important landmark decision in Mabo in the High Court was the catalyst for our elders in Cape York through the Cape York Land Council to get organised around native title. And of course, at the same time that the Native Title Act was being hammered out by the government we and the Aboriginal negotiators, Cape York organised yeah. around preparing that that for, for the WIC Native Title case. Just to ask the government if the government can recognise the law of the land, like which is housed the Aboriginal law, that remains on our soil, which is our traditional land, and the government should release that country back to us. This meeting is actually sponsored by um, the Land Council and the Upper Nipama Health Council. You see, they got a big job. They've got a huge job on their hands. In Cape York, the figures you will hear this week is that our people are dying at the highest rate, highest rate in any region in Australia. And those figures are a shame to this country. And it's the job of the Health Council, with our support, with our young fellows that are coming through, with the elders that we've still got here, and the memories and the wisdom of those elders who have left us, that's going to see us through these next 10 or 15 years. Um, there's been some jolly good successes, I think, in Cape York. Um, we've seen the establishment of the Land Council. So in terms of native title and, and um, the work that everyone's put in to um, get the Land Council happening, um, I can say that, you know, that's not a big headache for me anymore. That's not a big headache for ATSIC, uh, the Peninsula Regional Council. The job is now up to the organisation and the people that run it. Ladies and gentlemen, health and land goes together. If we can't get our people healthy, we will never get our land back. The only way we'll get that back is that we all work together for one common goal. And believe you me, us, us Murray people, we can fix things up in a day. But for those people down there, I don't know what they're doing. And people might read about it on the board here, about the Yalanji Native Title Claim, which has been lodged by the Land Council. Now that land claim is going to take many years for us to finish it. And there's a whole lot of other claims, some that we've won for Cape Melville, for Lakefield, for Birthday Mountain, some claims we already won now. But other claims, we're still in the middle of it. Kaurag claim, I think some of the elders from Horn Island are going to join us this week. There's a very strong claim, very important claim, and they need us to back them up for that claim over the next few years. We need to be mindful that we've got to be role models. We've got to be role models. So how can we do that? One way maybe is by establishing the Elders Network to work hand in hand with the local justice response program. When I joined the Cape York Land Council in 1990, my first opportunity came to me to take a trip down to Sydney and talk to the people and to get their support. We're still battling for our traditional land. And therefore, we better not sit down quiet. We have to buy the government back. We lost our human rights. They stole our human rights. And uh, we are really a human being. And we are not really animals because they stole our right and uh, because uh, they never told us anything. And uh, so that right must be really come out in the light, what we have really lost, our human rights. And, and that's, that's the whole problem because the land is ours. 
The spirit of the land and sea controls people, not the other way around. That's what the white men are doing, the other way around. They're looking for profit. Wherever we are, if we're united, our strength lies within us to struggle for our land, for culture, for the better, for the children of today, and for the children's future. But most of all, Cape York Land Council means is that we must obtain our identity, our culture, our language, our customs, our ceremony, believing on our spiritual beliefs. We kicked off one of our first meetings of the Cape York Land Council back in 1990-91 at Ingenu. And we had a big fight for, for the lodge at the tip there. And I think um, it's only right that we're back here in 1997 to um, continue, continue the fight um, for country, for people to get back onto country, for people to be healthy back on their country and for children to grow up knowing their country. That's what this whole week's all about. This meeting's probably one of our most important meetings because we're facing the biggest battle Cape York Bama have ever seen. The battle is against the government, Howard government, Borbidge government, who want to take away what we've fought hard for what we've won back. The 10 point plan, as you'll hear this week, is all about pulling the rug under our feet. It's about taking our rights away. It's about making sure that our children are once again dispossessed of their country. We've got to try and work out how all together, Cape York Land Council, Health Council, Youth Council, every other health council that we've got propping up in Cape York, how we can work together to try and beat this one. We've got till Christmas, probably a bit more hopefully, a bit more time to try and beat this one. It's the biggest fight that I've ever faced. It's the biggest fight that Noel's ever faced. It's the biggest fight that you, you, you'll ever face. There's never been a bigger win than the WIC decision. And this land council, these old people, were the ones who caused the situation to happen so that the WIC people can win this big decision. We've got to be the defenders of that decision. Um, just a bit of history on the youth council. Last year at uh, the Wujal Wujal summit, a few old people got up and said, uh, well, we need voices from, from, from our young people throughout Cape York, from our youth. So there was a resolution passed that, that this uh, newly Cape York Youth Council be established. And so um, in, in February this year, we, um, we had our first meeting with representing from each community that uh, came down to Apanipama, the health council office in Cairns. Yeah, Wayne. I really agree with you because you are a young man and you have a lot of interest for young people. Not only for old people, but anyway, all people, they are supporting you. But on financial supply, I think we will have to look very, very carefully to support young people. They are the well of tomorrow, not us. It is true that we need to take responsibility ourselves. But when you look at the Western system that this country is operating, it is based on argument, not on unity. That's how the Western system uh, operates. The overall system of the management, it is in total disarray and morally bankrupt. I've expressed few views uh, when I do 
lot of talk around the country, back in 94, 95, that we need to have a system in place, which I call SSD. That is Spiritual Sustainable Development. That system is very powerful and unique. It has been since time immemorial. The old people will tell you it is law of nature. It has been there. It existed for a long time. And part of the system, which is, I call is rightful inheritance of the land, not custodians or kingship, but the rightful inheritance of the land. Before everyone else go away from this meeting, Please, listen very carefully. A summit like this, it's an annual summit where all community people who have rights with their land, issues dealing with land, native title, other things, health, education. A summit like this is where it brings everyone together the important issue about today or this week is about what we're going to tell the government because it's almost end of 99 when we come into the year 2000 we'll be still thinking about handing money from the government or do we have to live by being self-sufficient I know that there's been some and there always will be, there always will be some negative aspects or some, some arguments and some frustrations. And these sorts of frustrations are, I want to say, brought on us because of the social conditions that we live in and the political policies that are imposed upon us. That it is government and their lack of understanding of our ways that we live, the lack of their understanding of the way that we, we wish to be treated equally, and their lack of understanding that we want to have the same opportunities that other people have in broader society. The lack of understanding that we have abilities to achieve like anybody else. <clears throat> and that's what Land Council's vision about setting Balkanoo up, up in Nipamazop, was all about. It's about screwing away from the government and so that we can turn and face and fight. In relation to this whole partnership plan, as the government has called it, the strategy is very simple. The strategy is what we want it to be. Do we have an opportunity to turn some of these ideas into changes in the law? Well, I don't know. Has anybody got a better idea of how you grab the ears of a Premier and try and get him to pay a bit of attention? <laughs> Um, on behalf of the Wujiruja community, uh, the Yalindji people and the traditional owners, we would like to welcome you here today. Thank you. We thank uh, Premier to come here. And uh, not only for the people, Wujiruja, what the chair lady said, for the people of the Cape that we're here today, that we've been waiting for him to see him and meet him, to put our view what we need in our community. To the Premier, may I say this, how many more lessons do we have to teach you to take in consideration or really into the depth of a feeling of what one has still, the culture which is never lost. Today, is the challenge I give you unto the outside world. So to the Premier, I challenge you to come to the Horn Island to sit with my elders and we will talk. We the Wutiti people have been fighting for our traditional land for many, many years. We want to go back and live there on our country. You are the key to open the gate for our return to return us with the, to our beloved country. I think we all support that property going back to the wood there. Let's show our support.
While we understand the special responsibilities the government feels obliged to exercise in matters to do with Aboriginal well-being, we assert our right to determine our own future and understand better than anyone else possibly can that any assertion of the right to self-determine must be accompanied by a willingness to assume the full range of responsibilities that full control of our lives will entail. If you want to know our number one social problem, it's the breakdown of trust between our people, inside our families, inside our communities. And trust is the glue. And if trust breaks down, there's not much you can do together. You can't solve problems. In fact, your problems start to increase. There's a lot of fights, a lot of griping, a lot of bitching, a lot of whinging amongst ourselves, amongst our organizations, in our communities. And uh, we've got to start working together because over the last six years, I think we've got worse. Everybody who tries to do something, we want to cut them down. It's a pity that we haven't got more people here from, from the Cape. Because the Cape is the big, big concern to everybody, not only to us, but to governments too. And we've got to, we the people who live in the Cape have got to show the way. We've got to lead everybody else and tell them what we want and how we want to do it. I think we've got to go back to basics, as Noel pointed out, and the three basic steps are unity. With unity comes trust and respect. The other one is we have to start taking responsibility. And the third one is we have to start showing strong leadership. You only want that people to talk, you, good, you talk good English, but you don't know the land. You don't know the people. We're suffering. We're suffering. The native title is nothing to us. Who can get the native title? You get the native title? I never get my native title. No, it's in the white man's shoes. Yeah, we never got it. I supported from the, from the beginning when I was in my uh, state council, the Cape York Peninsula. I support everybody. Yeah. Well, I think now, today, it's a... Uh, Run to the people there, uh, Sally, all them people there. I went down there, me and Gerard Peason, we went down there to talk to the um, Australian airline. You people only talk about forgetting money, that's all. I want this to be done today for my people too, for my land too, and satisfy me. All right? Up at the Weeper partnership plan meeting a few months ago, I sat back and I listened to the positive things that were said since the partnership plan was being spoken about. And when I went to WIPA, I really saw and really ap appreciate that what the partnership plan is all about. It's about us. We must as individuals, as families, as communities, as the regional people, and as Aboriginal people. This is why we've lost this contact with my old Falerian. His old Falerian, or his grandfather and them, our grandparents, were all about. Because what they went through, I tell you, is not. We haven't tasted it yet. But we've got the opportunity now to really grasp this partnership plan and I urge you to really put in constructive things today we need to develop an environment that encourages responsibility. For us to take responsibility and create a strong and happy future, we have to work hard at governance at all levels.
The health of Indigenous Cape York people, whilst improving, remains far below that of mainstream Australians. Apanipama's focus is to empower Cape York people to take responsibility for improving their own health at an individual, clan and community level to equal that of other Australians. Why is it with nearly $150 million of government grants that come into our communities that we aren't able to have successful businesses? Aren't we aren't able to see more of our young people go through the university, that we aren't able to convert this investment into jobs. And in, in getting our heads and minds around this issue, we have worked hard to work with people who actually know this game. So we have formed strong partnerships, partnerships which will last with the business community. The fact that you are here today, Mr Howard, is largely due to the hard work and the vision of our leaders. We recognise that government cannot solve all our problems for us. As young people, we are trying to take responsibilities for our future. We are working with our elders to address the terrible problems of, of grog and drugs and violence. When I was growing up in Kawanyama, there was 15 people in my class. Today, I'm the only one person that's gone to university and has finished secondary education successfully. The two issues that, in my opinion, are central to changing this story is education and health. And your government policies affect these things. Mr Prime Minister, earlier this morning, I introduced you to a very special lady who's sitting in the crowd. Her name is Martha the Kawata. Her husband fought for his country, Archer Bend, in 1975. To today, she doesn't have her country back. This is the fight and this is the struggle that our people go through every day. I urge you, I urge Minister Ruddock, your colleagues, member for Leichhardt, Warren Inch, the state government, state and territories, please, please find somewhere in your hearts to address the land issues of Aboriginal people. Well, first, uh, may I um, acknowledge the traditional owners um, of this land and to thank you very much for having us here. There's no doubt that the solution to the challenges of any community, just as the solution to the challenges of any nation, lies in the hands of its own people. And time and time again, in fact, quite uniformly, every speaker today spoke of the need for the assumption of personal responsibility. The message that we've been trying to push as a community up here is that rights and responsibilities go together. If we're going to have reform in Indigenous policy and we're going to build a future for our kids, then rights and responsibilities are going to be in balance. Our duty as an Indigenous people in leadership is to rebuild responsibility in our community and take charge of our social and economic predicament. I have before me today an application for a consent determination in respect of part of the lands, the subject of the native title claim brought on behalf of the weak people. Uh, it's worth noting that for present purposes, the present proceeding commences with an application uh, filed under the Native Title Act on behalf of the weak peoples in March 1994. The determination today deals only with the simplest part of the weak claim, yet it has taken six and a half years to achieve this limited result. It's a significant day today in the history of the weak people. We've lost so many elders, so many have taken up this fight before myself and before the other people standing here today. But I believe that those people are resting peacefully in their beds now. To be 
standing in your own country and to have pride of place is for weak and weak white people is the most important thing. It's like a um, closing of a beginning that happened way back before I was born and so many of us and the past and the present people that have fought for the country. Mediation and by agreement between the parties uh, with a proposition for the court that the court consider whether the, the terms and conditions of the proposed settlement be adopted and accepted as terms and conditions which uh, the court finds appropriate or otherwise. We are really happy to get native title back on Stress Gordon Station. So today it's a really important day for all my families. We are all right. Well, now, okay. The, fir the first thing to say about it is that this determination is a result of an agreement reached between all the parties, and in relation to the claim area. The rights are the exclusive right of possession, occupation and use to the exclusion of all others. That's what the use is. Today is a happy day for all of us and it, it, it's a historical day for, for the Cape. As we all know, Konyama is the land of waters and it's a perfect place to um, um, launch the first national park to be handed over in that manner. here you can hear it in the community how exciting it is this has been a long process but this is the first national park in the Cape which is being handed back to the traditional owners to manage Kawanyama is a particularly good place to start as you know this national park was first declared in 1977 so it's been a long time for a number of people and a lot of the traditional owners have said to me it's been 32 years in waiting but we finally got there and this really does set the way forward when we deal with land tenure issues on the Cape one of the ladies said yesterday, is, um, it's, uh, it's just like dancing through her tears. I feel the same way. I, I too can do that. And um, it's been a, a breakthrough for Cape York people. I'm just overwhelmed with um, today. Very happy with today. I'm, uh, I don't think there's words to say how happy I feel today. There are some decisions which, the, which APC, if APC intends to undertake dredging, so dredging out to build the barge loading facility, stockpiling of any materials such as coal, decided how to distribute those compensation entitlements. It's going to work, it's going to be profitable. When they make that decision, so it is split up equally between all of those 11 groups. Please make him feel welcome, Mr. Johnny Benson. We might talk about how we start the planning for that, all right? Any questions? All right, I'll hand it over to Matt. Does anyone disagree with it or want to say something about it or, or vote against it?
On the 25th of March 1997, the Kawanyama people applied in the National Native Title Tribunal for a determination as to the existence of native title. On the 30th of September 1998, proceedings were commenced in this court. The claim area lies between the Coleman and, St and Staten rivers on the western side of Cape York Peninsula. It is centred on the township of Kawanyama and covers an area of approximately 1,639,641.8 hectares. The claim area also includes the Beluga, Harkness, Kulatar, Rutland Plains, Inkerman, Dunbar and Diner Island pastoral properties. I have not come here today to give anything to the Kawanyama people. Rather, I have come to recognise on behalf of all Australians that the Kawanyama people are the traditional owners of this land pursuant to traditional laws and customs which have their roots in ancient times. I now recognise that traditional ownership. In so doing, I bind all Australians for all time, including the Commonwealth of Australia, the State of Queensland, the Kawanyama Aboriginal Shire Council, the Cook and Carpentaria Shire Councils, the Tableland Regional Councils and other respondents. On behalf of all Australians, and particularly on behalf of the judges of this court and our staff, I congratulate the Kawanyama people upon this recognition and wish you well for the future. It's good. Now we are so proud that we got our place back, our ancestral ground back, because we always be sending our spirit back there, but we never get any connection on the ground much. And my elders had done it in the past, fought hard to get this thing back, and so today we achieved something and I'm really proud of it. Congratulations, thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Very pleased to meet you. Congratulations. Very pleased to meet you. Congratulations. Very pleased to meet you. Congratulations. Very pleased to meet you.